Hello. Hello, my name's Gordon from Drayson Design and I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker and welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast and vidcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses over the last seven days. Welcome back. Uh, it's been uh, a busy week. It has. It's always a busy week and um, we've had some good week, uh, good weather this week as well, yeah. which is a little bit unusual. I remember we... We went out a couple of days ago and it was really bright and sunny. Yeah. Yeah, really nice. Um, so, uh, let's see. Is there any news, first of all? Not for me. Not for me either. There's There's been lots going on, but uh, nothing of sort of interest to our, to our listeners, I think. So let's get straight into our first and only topic today. We are going to have a discussion today about the state of AI. It's been sort of talked about all over the place and we, we thought we'd just give our little take on it and for those who don't know what we're talking about, we'll give you a little bit of a, an idea of AI and how it's progressing at the moment because it is, it is getting really, really big and, and yeah. expanding so quickly. In, in lots of different ways, there's, there's AIs for, for nearly everything now. Um, and people have probably used AI to build the AI tools. Um, but you have, you know, we started off with images um, and kind of text-to-speech, things like that. Um, and then obviously we've moved into sort of like uh, a question, questions and answers type thing with ChatGPT where you can pretty much answer anything and it has an answer um, for it, whether it be maths a question, whether it be code, whether it be asking just information like you would a, a, a search engine. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different use cases and things that it's being used for. So let's, let's break the AI, sort of the big AI word, uh, and break it down into different points and we'll talk about each one as we go. I should mention, that the reason that uh, we sort of decided to talk about this is because of a new AI uh, that we have found for the software that we use to do the transcriptions for all of our episodes. So we basically upload the video and the software transcribes everything. We then have a, a real person who goes in and checks it all and that some of the uh, some of the mistakes and errors are, are quite funny, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the translation. <laughs> some of the what what they think we've said is very funny, and they've got a new feature which is called AI Assist. And one of the bits that they can do now is chapter markers. So what it'll do is it'll take the whole of the transcription, and it will look to see what we're talking about, and it will create chapter markers in our videos for that topic and it will give you time codes and we've actually added that to all the episodes from going back to episode 100 Um, because that was you know it's like 16 15 uh, episodes and you know that was all I really wanted to go back to because I could spend a ton of time on it but I think it's the the more recent episodes that people are going to want to to look at that Uh, chapter feature and if you go onto YouTube there'll be a little chapter um, that will show you what you're listening to at that point part in in the part of the episode Uh, and that's a really clever feature and if you think about what it's doing there what it's doing is it's it's basically just analyzing the whole text and working out what we mean it's it's looking at the meanings behind everything so that's how we got into this um, topic for today. So let's let's break it down into let's see. We'll break it down into the AI that we discovered and the point at which we discovered them. Okay. So let's start with um, AI text. So it's it's things like Jasper, things like AI writing, where it will. Uh, it'll listen to a prompt that we give it. Everything is to do with prompts. Prompts is what AI uh, live on. So the first bit that we found was the text uh, writing prompts. So basically, you would say, give me 10 bullet-pointed ideas for blog posts 
on the topic of building a website, for example. And it would then go away and it would come back and it would list out 10 points. And then you could go and you could use another prompt and say, write me a blog post all about, and then you could give it one of the prompts it's already given you. And it would then write you a paragraph, two paragraphs. And as we've gone on and on, it's going to be more and more paragraphs till you get to like a long form article, yeah. uh, which is where we are now. Um, I mean, let's just let's just look at that first of all. It needs to be trained, right? Yes. So the way it's being trained is on models. And originally it was being trained on data up to sort of 2019, which is sort of when it started to be becoming slowly sort of a niche thing before it became mainstream. So uh, lots of techie people were finding it and 2019 was sort of where the data was up to so i mean do, do you understand how the models work or you know what what how it's listening to the data that we can explain to people um well they kind of get they get fed into obviously you need very very powerful computers to obviously analyze them um and i watched some videos on someone doing kind of uh, games and things like that and basically you you basically just keep running simulations and things like that, or in terms of a game, you're running simulations. Um, and, and it's learning. Yeah, so, and, but you're giving them points. So, you know, in, in terms of the game for the AI, it would get getting given points if they did something correct. And obviously, as you go on, and so, you know, how they are trained is, you know, if it gives you a piece of content back that you've... So you give it a bunch of information, and it then spits back random random words, random sentences, you then obviously say, well, this doesn't make sense. So it goes back and it comes back with a newer version. And so this is how you have iterations of AI and how you have, you know, how it improves over time is that you keep giving it feedback, basically, saying this is good, this isn't good. And over time it learns. It goes, okay, well, last time I did this, you gave me this type of feedback and said it wasn't good. So I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to change it and give you something else. It still could be not good, but I've at least learnt that you know what, what I gave you before wasn't good and then what it does is it is it grabs text like Gutenberg is the library of out of print and out of copyright books so you can feed that all into the AI give that a model it now has an idea of sentence structure yeah. and uh, paragraphs and when to put punctuation in etc and then you add in a load of other articles and things from newspapers. So it's got data, it's got information. It knows about uh, all sorts of different things. So when you ask it to write something for you, it's, it's not copying text from a particular place. It's using all of the information that it's learnt to then generate new copy. Now, the problem we've always had with um, writing articles, for example, is that you have to fact check it because it doesn't always get its facts correct. Um, I asked it to write me some, you know, description of, uh, you know, Gordon's magic. And there was a little bit on the web that it could pick from, but it also had learned about other magicians and it's, it, it gave information like, you know, Gordon's magic has been going for four years, which you know, isn't true. It's more like 30 years, but you have to fact check it and fact check it. That's really difficult to say. And make sure that what it's giving you is a good sort of starter point. You don't want to ever copy and paste a whole article uh, and just publish it because, you know, it's, it's not going to do you any favours because it might be giving incorrect information. Uh, more importantly, Google is now starting to learn itself what is being created solely by uh, AI and is, is sort of downgrading that content. So just copying and pasting just to get your number of blog posts up, for example, is not going to do you any favours. You'll end up ruining uh, your credibility. Um, but the the AI writing is 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 getting really good. I mean, Jasper, for example, is one of the one of the big ones out there, and it's it's quite expensive, but it's also very good. You can give it very little information. You can treat it a little bit like a conversation. We'll come back to the conversation part again in the future, where you can just ask it to redo it, but focus on 
you know, a particular point that you want to make. Um, and this is this is our this is the first sort of introduction I had to to AI. Yeah. Um, the second introduction I had was Dali. So Dali is the OpenAI's uh, text to image um, AI. And I, I basically just came across a website and it had this description and video of someone typing in, you know, make me an, a, 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 an image of an avocado chair. That's the one I remember. And it came out with this image that looked just like an avocado that could be used as a chair. And I was thinking, how how is this possible? It's I don't understand. But again, it's it's all to do with the models. And the models have been trained on lots of different images as to what something is. Um, and it's got a name, and I just cannot remember what it's called at the moment. This, um, uh, this type of process is called... Um, you, you tell them a bit about what you know about this, and I'll think about it. So Mid Journey is another Mid Journey is um, very image, good. Uh, well, brief to, oh, to image. Stable diffusion. That was the that was the word I was looking for. So that's the that's the process that they're using. Um, we'll come back to Mid Journey. It's uh, it's it's to do with finding um, a a page of noise. So it's sort of you've got noises effectively either black or white pixels, and it's it's one or the other, and it's a whole screen full of them, and it's all random, and that's what noise is. And it's generating images based on that original noise pattern and then changing the content into what you're looking for. And it's every, every derivative of it is, is getting clearer and clearer until it ends up with an image that fits your prompt. So, yes, uh, Stable Diffusion is where I first... Uh, found this and that's what Dali uses I believe um, and then you've got things like Mid Journey which have their own models so keep going with Mid Journey because so it's really interesting Mid Journey was one of the first kind of image to, good image to AI or so text, text to, image, to image AI that kind of took the internet by storm I guess um, it's just, got a very good style hasn't it that's what yeah, a lot of the a lot of the images or prompts were quite close to what what they you know had been requested, but at a high level. Um, and it's got a sort of a fantasy mythical type feel to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can pass in different parameters, and there's obviously there are brief makers out there to help you build up good briefs to get good results. Um, so you can pass in, you know, I want it to be this size, you know, aspect ratio, for example. Um, you know, I want it to have this type of style. So, you know, some people put like Marilyn Monroe type, the um, the, art, the, the artist that did um, Andy Warhol, I think his name is. Okay. That type of style of an image. And you can obviously pass in these the, these parameters and you can get back a very realistic, you know, in in. The style that you've asked for or a realistic type image yeah and and the more information you give the prompt the closer your image is going to be to it so you can be really specific so you can say things like i want to have uh, a knight in shining armor with a broad sword there is a dragon that he is fighting and in the background there's a gothic castle that may have come from Romania and the night sky is showing the moon with the stars out. And if you were to put all of that in as a prompt, you would get an image pretty much that looks like you've asked for. The, the less I information you give it, the more the AI has to try and interpret it itself. So you end up with images that are very different to what you're looking for and maybe just very loosely based on what your original uh, few words were in the prompt. Um, you can also put negative things in the prompt. So you can say, I don't want to have a, a damsel in distress in this image, for example, because it will know that if you've got a knight in shining armour and a dragon and a castle, there could be a princess in there as well. But if you're saying, I don't want a princess, it won't put that in. Um, text is a big problem for all AI uh, at the moment. Um, creating text that is readable—it just 
it knows about text, it doesn't understand about words, it doesn't understand about stylized words. So you end up, if it's something that has words in it, like you can ask it to create a logo for something and it might put some text around, but it's just going to be gobbledygook, basically, text that's placeholder rather than yeah, can't, actually can't means anything. Yeah, you can't read it. It's not it's not readable at all. Um, but you can you can spend hours and hours crafting the perfect prompt so that you end up with an image that looks, you know, amazing. And you can give it styles, like you said. You can you can give it. Um, you can say you'd like a watercolor. You want a line drawing. You want a a, a charcoal image. It understands all of this because it's been fed thousands and millions and thousands of millions of images, so that it's learning what everything is. Um, and it's just it's just phenomenal what you can do. I have Midjourney. I have a paid account for it. Uh, it's not a lot of money. I think I pay something like ten dollars a month, and uh, you know I get to get to play with it, um, and it's getting better all the time. I mean, we are on version five currently for Mid Journey. Version four came out like a month ago, and version three was like four months before that. It's like the the amount of time that it's taking to get to the next generation of AI is very very short, and it's getting shorter. Because obviously the AI is learning quicker. Um, let's move to the the next part of AI, which we've discovered, which is the the chatbot, if you like, uh, the smart chatbot. Yeah. So we've got we've got a, a number of them. We've got ChatGPT, which is the the one that came out kind of first by OpenAI. Uh, we also have Bing. Um, which they, is using ChatGPT. Um, they, they created their own kind of search engine bot version of ChatGPT. Yeah. Um, and I think other, other Microsoft, I think, have li- released one. Google. Um, they've all kind of released their own versions of it using the same underlying um, kind of uh, AI slash kind of um, information they fed in. But normally they will have fed in information on top of that. So they use ChatGPT underneath the hood of all of them. But they've all given them and trained their models to, you know, to work better with whatever the, the actual product that they're you know, using. So if it's uh, for Google or for something like Bing, they're obviously going to be trained to answer questions in a way that they're going to give the most relevant responses and you know, most likely will give you websites that are most relevant. Um, but whereas because they're a search engine, that's their business. Yeah. Whereas obviously things like Jasper are trained to to give you uh, blocks of text that that can help you and you you can use. Yeah. So and they have their own chatbot as well. And it, what's interesting is when they started, when it first came out, it could answer you know simple questions. It could you could do, ask it to write lyrics for a song. You could ask it to write a poem. You do, could ask it to write code. Maths equations. Maths equations, yeah. So it knew all about this sort of thing, which has an answer, uh, whether that be factual. a logical, a factual, or a creative answer. Um, we, we've moved on again, though. We're on the next generation of ChatGPT, which is version 4, uh, and that's now allowing it to search the web so it can now go out into the onto the internet to grab data and bring it back and answer your question. You can also uh, there are there are plugins now available, so you can add features to ChatGPT and add to its knowledge base. Um, and that's 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 all part of the paid version again. Haven't looked into the price of uh, that, but I'm assuming it's not going to be a lot Thank again. You Thirty dollars, I think, okay. something like that. Um, because you have, uh, what's it, Wolf, Wolfram? That's, Wolfram, yeah. That's a plugin, and that that because up until recently, it's only had up to twenty twenty one, I believe, in terms of historical data. So it didn't know anything about anything that's happened in twenty twenty two. So if you ask it who was the Formula One champion of twenty twenty two, it it wouldn't know because it doesn't have that data. Whereas with these plugins that are coming out it's being fed newer information and it kind of can stay up to date um, and things like that and obviously read on the internet and find out stuff. So that's that's sort of an overview of AI and AI has been used in other places like in photography and Photoshop for example now has AI plugins that will 
take content, they've had it for a while actually, as a content aware feel thing, which is a sort of AI, where you have uh, you know, an image and you have lots of people in the background, for example, and you can sort of cut around them and say, AI fill that, and it I'd will say look that at. Was AI. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, it, I'm not sure it was. It's not as we know AI now. No. So you can get the the image AI to to do what's called in painting, where you can tell it what you want. You can, you know, uh, select an area by painting it, and then you can say, I don't want that, but I do want you to put a cute dog in there, and it will do that. So that's that's sort of the more up to date yeah. version of it. But Photoshop were doing this a long while ago with um, with their content aware fill, where you would just select an area which might have a person in the background, and you would say content aware fill, and it would just basically look around what uh, was was around. So it would try and continue the background as if that person wasn't there, and it would just effectively erase them. I think you know the Google Pixel phone is doing effectively the same thing these days, where you can just you know, use your finger to select something and it'll just get rid of it for you. It's like a um, magic Apple, eraser. The Apple um, iPhones can, if you press and hold on a photo, can actually select a subject, um, whether that's you, basically cut you out, just by pressing and holding and it kind of selects what it thinks is the main subject. So if it's a photo of you, it will select and draw around you and then you have that as like a, a transparent image of yourself or whatever yeah. the subject is, which again is probably using AI to determine what's the foreground and what's the background. Yeah. And so AI is being used in lots of different ways, but the three sort of sections that we've mentioned are probably the biggest for consumers, uh, for, for normal, everyday people. So it raises a few questions. So first of all, is AI getting too big too quickly? Because, I mean, what's to come? You know, this time next year... What are we going to be looking at? Are, is AI going to be taking over people's jobs? Is it going to be putting people out of out of business? Is it going to create new jobs in different ways? Like, you know, every other time that we've had a, a new technological advancement in the past. You know? Yeah, I think with, you know, when, when computers first came around, people were thinking, well, I'm going to have lost my job because... Excel can can do the same calculations that someone that like a mathematician who was paid money to, you know, yep. to answer questions and things like that. Um, then we had you know Siri and things like that where they were answering questions again, taking away uh, you know people relying on their phones more and so they didn't need uh, dial up or whatever. Um, and so, but with every new enhancement, it means there's more jobs kind of created because people have got to run those things. Um, so I think with, with AI, it's very much going to be, there probably will be people's jobs that are lost and things like that. But at the same time, I still think that at least at the moment, AI hasn't got the self-awareness and control to be able to run itself. So AI can't tell other AIs what to do. And so in that regard, you know, you, you still need a human. So if you look at it from a manufacturing process, you have all of these amazing robotic machines building cars, building products and stuff in a factory, um, but they still need someone to press a button to start it. They still need someone to load up a file. Um, you still need someone to, to, to maintain them and, and fix them if they break. Uh, and I think we have a while to go before we have robots fixing other robots and being able to figure out what's actually happening because you know that that takes it to another level and another depth of which AI currently doesn't have. So let's look at, at jobs that are going to be affected. Things like illustrators, painters, uh, authors. There is a, a, a completely AI written book that is now in, in Amazon for sale. You know, it was completely written. Obviously, a person re was required there to, to create the prompts and to, to put everything in order and to make sure they got the content they wanted. Upload it. Yeah, and all that lot. But, you know, as, as far as the writer goes, the AI has taken over that job. So are we going to have a problem with writers being out of work? Are we going to have problems with, with illustrators and, and artists who are no longer being required to come and do custom pieces because you can do it with AI now. I think it will get to the point where 
you kind of start go, going back in time. So if you think about music, you had records, you then had CDs, you then had kind of basically streaming and online digital versions. And you've now seen a surge of people that like collect records because there's so much thing, everything's digital that actually it's nice to have a, something physical. So I think... Well, that, also audiophiles, people who really appreciate the sound, say they prefer the analogue sound of a, um, a record, which is bizarre because it's turning it into a digital signal uh, by, by using the needle. Oh, excuse me. Hey. Oh, pardon me. See? Live so shows. So I think that in terms of that, I think it's it may go out of fashion but then come back into fashion because people were like, well, everything is being used. AI is being used for everything to generate images. Actually, we want a an actual physical human to design something else. So I think that's probably what's going to happen is that because the computer digital generative uh, images are going to become mainstream and the, basically this, the only thing that's going to be used to create art that actually hiring someone is going to come back into fashion and people are going to be like, actually i want to hire someone to do this um maybe they'll become even rarer yeah that it's a real person who's created this image and therefore it's you know going to be worth a lot more well the records are a lot more expensive now than they probably were hmm. Um, when they first were released, and again, I think people, I don't think, I think CDs are kind of in between. You know, you got records which are kind of some of the fur, the oldest, and you got digital, and they're kind of stuck in between where no one really wants CDs because it's still sort of digital, but still analog. So, um. so the other thing is the copyright of certain things. There's been a lot in the in the news recently about. You know, I want to create an image in the style of Andy Warhol. Well, how does that work with copyright? Because obviously Andy Warhol has a style and you're basically copying his style to create your image. So is Andy Warhol the owner of the style and you're the owner of the image or how does it work? You know, and are we able to take an image that AI has created or text that AI has created and sell it? You know, is that something that's possible? At the moment, the answer is yes, but that's probably because no one's actually tested it. There are a lot of, lot of artists who are complaining because you can get images in the style of and then put that person in, and they are complaining that there's there's lots of work out there that looks like theirs which isn't and they're not owning a penny from it because the ai has just been trained on their images uh and I, and that could be a problem i think there will be a court case at some point that will determine what's going on and we may end up being more restrictive as to what we can request um maybe an artist can opt out and their style will be taken out of the model so that you can no longer have a an image created in the style of. Um, what do you think? I think it's a very much of a grey area. I think no one knows, you know, we're so early on with AI still that no one knows what it's capable of, what the boundaries are. Um, and I think that you have, you know, you very much have, well, you know, it takes, it, 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 I would say that it is an art form to create a good brief. So then you know, saying that they didn't create it, well, if you were to just put in, create this this piece of art, and you were to use a very, very basic brief, you are not going to get the same results as someone who has spent time building up a, a complex brief that gets them a very, very good result. So do you think maybe people are going to go to people who are good at creating prompts, or briefs as you call them, and saying, this is the image I want, can you make it for me using AI? So you're, you're effectively going to a third party who is then using AI to get you what you want without you having to learn how to create the perfect prompt. I think so. I think it, you know, it's similar to people that come and for websites. You know, they don't know how to do it. And you know, they, they can see what the finished pick result is, but they don't know how to achieve it. Or they can achieve it, but not to the same level of quality. You know, I have a friend who's very, very good at creating prompts. And I've you know, seen their image and gone, OK, let me see if I can create something similar haven't got anywhere close to the quality of it, even though I can literally see the image that's been generated and I've typed in kind of literally what what the image has in it. 
and I don't get any anywhere near the, the same results. And they're they're quite protective over over their prompts. You know, they don't they don't want to share the prompts that they've been using because you know not everyone can. It's a skill. Them. Yeah, it's a skill they've developed. Um, so then, yeah, then you have you obviously the copyright of well, if you've come up with the prompt that generates and the prompts, if you use the same prompt twice is not it won't achieve the same results every single time it's not. unless you use the same seed so the seed is the uh, the noise pattern yes. that we started with if you use the same noise pattern and you use the same prompt you will get the same result yeah um but it changes each time you have a different seed you'll get a different image um and you can keep going until you get one you like um what well, whatever the outcome is at the moment um for for people like us who are who work in the sort of tech industry um, I think it's a really exciting time. Um, it's it's giving people who aren't very good at writing, people who aren't very good at drawing, it's giving them the ability to create content that they want and they can keep recreating it until they find something they like. Um, I can't draw, but during the week I asked Midjourney to draw me a colouring in dog. So a, a, a cute dog that a child could colour in as a, as a drawing. And it gave me exactly what I wanted. And it was perfect for my, my purpose. I could never have done that myself. So having these tools available to me, and I think that's what we need to look at them as. We need to look at them as tools. Of course. They're not the finished article. that You, you can't just take necessarily what they give you and just use it straight away. You have to... Use it as a tool, the same way you, you, you do a pen if you're writing something. You know, that's just a tool to get the thoughts from your head onto paper. Um, but it is a very exciting time, and things are changing very, very quickly. You know, if, you, if you're watching or listening to this podcast in four months' time, it's currently, uh, what is it, April, early April. So if you're listening to this in a few months' time, chances are a lot of what we're saying is no longer valid because it's moved on in leaps and bounds and is completely different again. Um, it is going mainstream because people can see the advantage of, of AI and what it can do for them. Um, any final thoughts, Taylor? I don't think so. I think we kind of wrapped them up, really. So, yeah, watch this space. I think this is a topic that we'll come back to because it's very much in the news at the moment. Um, it seems every day there's something new coming along that's using AI. And, uh, you know, as computers get faster, more powerful, so AI will learn quicker. And one thing we haven't even touched on is Dream Booth, which is where you can create your own model of your own image or your face or your person or your dog uh, and then create images based around that, which is, you know, something that's getting better and better every day as well. Uh, we haven't even touched on that, but... That's it, I think. That we'll have to stop at this point um, because we've got, you know, AI that needs to transcribe this at some point. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's our little sort of look into AI, and it, it will change, and we'll come back to it in the future. But um, for those who had no idea about it, that's what we think. And if you have you know, a knowledge or an opinion on this, please leave it in the comments because we're very interested to hear what you think about it and, you know, does it affect you? Is it something that you are concerned about? Is it going to, you know, make you redundant? Are you going to have to find a new job, a new, you know, sphere to work in, if you like? Um, yeah, let us know, you know, in the comments below. Cool. That's everything from me. That's everything from me. So thank you for joining us. As always, we can be found on YouTube and on Facebook. Please like, share and subscribe. You can also go to our website thisweekwith.co.uk to find all of our past episodes and anything we may have spoken about. We'll see you again next week, 1pm on Friday. Until then, my name is Gordon and I'm from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.